Hey guys! Hey friends! So we're at a brand new campsite. Well, brand new campsite to us. Yeah. We've never been here before. We're at Lac Lejeune Provincial Park. Yeah, it looks super nice here. It's up the Coquihalla just above Kamloops and you're kind of up above all the mountains or where you start to climb them at least. So we're used to seeing so many big pointy mountains off in the horizon and we're kind of up in like an alpine vibes here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And also, guess who we brought with us? We brought Kitty Cat with us. Hi, Kitty. Long story short, she's loving being back in the RV, but we'll get into that a bit more later, I think. Anyway, we're ready to go set up our campsite and get ready to enjoy Lac Lejeune Provincial Park. So beautiful out here today it's like the perfect temperature my phone says it's 19 degrees and like a little bit of a breeze so it's definitely like shorts and t-shirt weather but not too hot which is also important yeah. especially with a newborn you don't want to worry about her overheating and stuff like that but yeah it's supposed to get to a high of 24 today which should be really nice as well we're gonna head out for a walk here shortly but first look at our campsite here there's just like one row of campsites between us and the lake there, but we're kind of up on a hill with a bit of a view of the lake. We're in campsite number 121, and we'll show you on our walk, but we drove by 124, and it looks like a really nice site. So, yeah. I also wanted to mention the trees and stuff in this area. They're super cool, like Luke said. They're kind of like more alpine style trees and stuff like that, and bushes and everything. We didn't really know how much privacy this campsite was going to offer. We did see some pictures of the campsite before we arrived and it looked like not too tree, it looked pretty open, which is nice because you get a lot of sunshine but sometimes not much privacy. But seriously, it's like the perfect amount of trees and foliage where you get privacy but not too much shade and kind of feeling like socked into a forest. Anyways, Chloe's having a little snooze here so I think it's a good time to go and take a walk. We're going to bust out the stroller and head on our way. We can look back someday Baby, don't you understand That we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand Yeah, we only get one life I wanna make it count, honey Come on now and take my hand Just taking a quick stop in campsite number 124 here But unfortunately, it's first come, first served You can't reserve it online anyway, we just noticed, so Bit of a bummer, but it is huge here. That way where Alicia pulled in all the way back there. Pretty good little plateau view of the lake. You could probably fit a huge class A here even. We noticed when we drove in there's a class A. We want to go see the top campsites because they look really nice as well. We're going to go find a map and see how many campsites are here. But lots of campsites here. Lots of ones for big rigs. It's also a really popular fishing lake with two big fishing docks. And little boat launches and spots where you can just put your boats up on the grass along the lake. So. Good if you got a boat if you want to come out fishing while you're camping and yeah we're just loving it here another perk it's only like six minutes off of the main highway between vancouver and calgary on the highway there you can just take a quick detour pop off here camp out here and have a little pit stop i know when we're out camping and driving down to vancouver way in the lower mainland sometimes it's a bit big of a drive doing a four plus hour drive so if you can pop off the road have a nice little camp out here enjoy a beautiful campsite and then get back going to where you plan on camping anyway Worth a pit stop in our opinion. All right, it's time for Chloe's first dog experience. What? She's still just sleeping. We 
just found the sandy dump here. There's two different lanes you pull in. There's actually only one hole in the ground. Obviously some people have different dumping tanks on each side, but worth noting. We're loving walking in this campground here still though. It's all sorts of hills, different campsites, really private again too. I don't know if we're gonna just keep finding more and more private provincial parks this year, but let's catch some wind. But the privacy here is amazing. All these different lanes, the paths going between. Overall, this is a great provincial park too. And for never visiting it, we're definitely gonna be adding this to our list of little pit stops off the highway when we're ever going down to lower mainland, I imagine. We'll be seeing this one again. All right, we're just going out to the entrance of the park where the like park map and information and stuff is, and we see a telephone booth. What? And we're gonna place bets. I think that there's a telephone still in there you operational. Do? Yeah. I think there's no way, they can't be. <laughs> it makes sense, you're just off the highway and it'd be a useful spot to have one, but there's no way they're still around. Especially to, over here. To be fair, there is cell phone service, so it would make a lot more sense yeah, if nice. there wasn't cell phone service, but I still think there's a phone in there. Oh! What? Okay. <laughs> there's a phone, but it's out of order. What does that mean? Who won? I call it a 50-50, I don't know. I mean, it's clearly not in service anymore. This is kind of just like a little, it's like a relic of times gone mm -hmm. past in the provincial park, I would mm -hmm. say. I don't know, would you call that a win or a tie? It's a tie. Yeah. Well, we came all the way up here, all the way up the hills, to try and get some footage and also just see the physical park map, see all the different sites and stuff, but they don't even have one up here. It's just like information about the park and rules and stuff nearby. Yeah, bummer. I guess we're just going to have to bring it up on my phone, like I suggested at the bottom of the hill, but Luke wanted to see the actual map. I did. One thing we did see though, quickly worth noting, expensive notices here. If you have a site booked and then you show up to a first come first serve like 124, they don't allow you to go to the desk and say, hey, I'm site, whatever, can I change to this one? No, there's a sign that says you have to actually cancel your reservation. Oh, Chloe. And then you have to go there and pay for the whole new one. So that's kind of bummer if you want to change last minute. And if you cancel, that means you have to forfeit your first mm -hmm. night's fee and everything. Normally the parks would just let you like switch sites and be pretty cool about it, I think, but apparently not here. It does make sense. There's a lot of extra work for them and for no benefit for them, but yeah. And firewood's $10 a bundle, limit of two. So there's a yeah. limit and no discount, 10 bucks. Anyways, Chloe's getting a little fussy. I think she's getting hungry. So we're going to head back to our campsite, feed Chloe, recuperate, all that kind of stuff. And then I think later on tonight, we'll also head up for a walk and check out the rest of the campground here. Okay, Chloe's been fed and Luke and Chloe actually laid on the bed and actually had a nap together. It was the Ooh. cutest thing I've ever seen. And don't worry, Chloe was safe. I was there watching, but it was so cute. I got some meat cut up and marinating for dinner tonight. I'm really excited for that. With and the mini knife, we forgot the big knife. Oh yeah, I'll show you when we got back to the RV. I had to use this little paring knife to cut everything that I cut. I cut some veggies as well. It was the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life because we forgot to put our kitchen knife back in the RV. <laughs> so that was a fail, yep. but it actually worked decently well. Anyways, we're out for our second walk here and Luke's wearing Chloe. Yeah, on the one side of the campground over here, it's actually super treed in. So if you're looking for a bit more shade, maybe a little bit more like treed privacy, not quite as much sun as where we are. Oh, there's a giant Class A up there with his generator running. Mm. Dang, so you can get a big Class A even in the front row. We've seen that big one back there, but look at this. He's lakefront and he's got a Class A. Yeah, look at the lake here. It's yeah, not yeah. quite as treed as some of the other spots down where we're going to walk past in a bit here, but yeah. so nice. And people even have like their boats tied up there. Just waiting for them. Pretty, Pretty cool. Yeah, check it out. Lake is looking so pretty right now too. It's like calm, but just a little bit of ripple. So the reflection on it is really, really pretty. And all the trees in the background are so neat looking. It's so cool. Oh, and there's fish jumping in the lake too. Dang, we gotta get a better boat to come on and have an inflatable or an aluminum boat would be cool too. Mm. If, only. if only. Big news to share with you guys as well. Originally I was planning on working maybe three, 
four days and try and get some part-time hours only at work during the summer so we could go camping and then have a few days off. But we actually looked into it and I can take an extended parental leave. So we're gonna take parental leave all the way up into basically the start of fall. So we'll have all of summer to plan camping trips. We can do bigger loops so we don't have to just be kind of going one spot, home, one spot, home. We're doing a lot more little kind of bigger loops. I'm gonna do the Kootenays and a few other big ones that we have planned as well. So our schedule is looking pretty good for camping this year. We get to go out, share some more adventures with you, make some more memories with Chloe here. And that's gonna be so nice. I'm so glad we looked into that and got it approved. Yes. But anyway, I thought that's pretty exciting at least. So this is Lac Lejeune Lake here. The provincial park is actually just the campground more or less above it. And then there's actually people that own houses all the way around on certain forest service roads. There's also Lac Lejeune Resort. It looks kind of like a fancier little cobblestone type cabin area, but I want to do a walk eventually. I might do it tomorrow morning. And I'm going to leave the provincial park, walk down one of the residential roads and then fly the drone. We know you can't take off or land drones inside of the provincial park. so. If you ever see drone footage coming up when we're actually staying at a provincial park, I'm gonna be going for a walk. I'll walk out of the boundaries or I'll walk down the road we came in. So you don't worry about drone laws, but it's pretty cool that this park is just such a tiny little area and then it literally turns into residential all the way around. So your house is basically the same scenery that a provincial park would have. Beautiful. Chloe is once again missing all of the beautiful scenery. Chloe. <laughs> That's okay, you can sleep. Oh boy, Luke found the playground. Oh. <laughs> Chloe, let's go play. <laughs> That's a speed fly. Is that what kids are into these days? Be careful. <laughs> Another first for Chloe. Her first time playing in the playground. <laughs> With Dad. <laughs> So we're up another row now and it's kind of cool this campground is built on a hill so each row of campsites kind of have like a little view of the lake but in this one spot it's like the perfect viewpoint ever look at this that is a great view you get the lake in the distance but still some of that like alpine foliage but we really have to get heading home like at least on the way home now because the bugs are out in full force yeah blood's been drawn yeah blood's Darn. been drawn and it wasn't chloe's blood thankfully Speaking of on a hillside though, this is site 106. If you're a tenter, you can park your car here and look at this. Whoa, talk about a view. Okay, well I made and we enjoyed some dinner. I made some like Korean barbecue beef rice bowl thing. It's real good. Pretty delicious. And then we were going to spend the night outside with our propane fire ring, but wouldn't you guess that there's so many mosquitoes outside. Yeah, we didn't notice any during the day at all, but as soon as the sun went down, I guess, they're out there in full force. Mm -hmm. Reminded us of Ontario when Alicia's eye got bit. Yeah. And then having Chloe, of course, we don't want her being vulnerable out there if we stop looking for a second and all of a sudden one's on her so we find ourselves back inside yeah so we're just hanging out in the rv tonight with our kitty cat as well yeah she's doing such a good job like when we first brought chloe home from the hospital honestly cat was not a fan of chloe at all for at least a couple of weeks totally. she pretty much avoided her and us <laughs> which was really really sad yeah but she's starting to warm up to chloe and actually She's kind of interested in Chloe now and definitely not like scared or worried of her at all, so. Yeah, the camping trip's bringing everyone together at least. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, she's basically hiding upside into the house, but she even brushed up on her today, so. Yeah, they're becoming BFFs. Progress. And cats love being camping. She's a bit skittish outside every now and then. She's kind of super hyper aware of everyone walking around, even if they're quite a long ways away from us, but she got to get some fresh grass, smell some bushes and get around, so. She's loving it and we're having a good time here. And then other than that, we're kind of wrapping up in this site. We're gonna use our water. We're off to a full hookup site tomorrow. Yeah. 
but we're gonna be able to do more kind of loop arounds like this like we mentioned earlier because since I have extended parental leave approved now we'll be able to travel a whole lot more this summer so that'll mean when we do the Kootenays instead of going out there and having to do a whole bunch of driving in one day see all this stuff and then head home before my work starts up again we can hopefully go to like three four all sorts of different bigger campsite loops like that even eventually maybe some of the national parks again this year we're talking about yeah i'm like i'm so glad that luke ended up getting the whole summer off because yeah i mean like obviously i wouldn't mind more help with chloe <laughs> just like selfishly but also it would have been a lot of work to be like packing up the rv yeah. for like a one or two night trip and then coming home and unpacking and then luke getting ready for work and then oh it just would have been a lot of work and we really wouldn't have been able to upload on YouTube very frequently at all, I don't think. So, yeah. really excited that we got the summer off together and we're going to do some more adventuring. Yeah, so year three of RVing is full swing. We're getting a whole lot more camping and a whole lot more videos coming back to you all out there, that means. So, hope you enjoy the videos with us. And otherwise, I suppose we'll catch you all in the next video otherwise then, friends. Yeah, see you guys then. Yeah, thanks for watching. Take care. Dun, 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 dun. Dun 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 dun